the advice that only Canadian citizens and permanent residents can get this license. However, you can still fly your drone if you apply for a Special Flight Operations Certificate. Hello and welcome to my most detailed video on, on how you can get your advanced Canadian drone license without spending a fortune on courses and flying lessons. I did it and you can too. By the end of this two-part series you will know what's involved and how to prepare yourself for it. Let's just get right into it. In order to get your advanced Canadian R-Pass license, you need to be at least 16 years old and a Canadian citizen or permanent resident. You need to pass an online exam that costs $10 to take. If you fail that, you have to wait at least 24 hours before taking it again. There's no limit on how many times you can try. Often, so-called experts will tell you that you must, should, or if they're really honest, could take an, a course to prepare yourself for that exam. Look at me. I have an advanced Canadian R-Pass license. I'm not some kind of aviation freak or all-round genius. <laughs> I've never seen the inside of a Canadian flight school and haven't spent the penny on online courses. If I can do it, you can do it too. Do you want it bad enough though? I'm asking that because there are two things that might hamper your motivation, so you'd better be sure because otherwise you may be looking at wasting some time. First, preparing for that exam takes time. You have to be able to answer at least 40 out of 50 questions correctly and you get exactly one hour to do it. There are eight knowledge areas that you need to study and I'll get to those in a moment. But second, you can fly fantastic drones that weigh under 250 grams without a license in Canada, almost unrestricted. The DJI Mini Pro might be what'll end up standing between you and this advanced R-Pass license. It's that good. It all depends on how far you'll ultimately want to take it. If you're like me, you're highly motivated to do things the right way and open up all the possibilities that come with an advanced drone license. Heavier drones can carry better cameras and they fly better. They're faster, more steady in windy conditions and just more capable all around. So here are the eight knowledge areas to study. Number one, air law and traffic rules and procedures. I'm leaving a link in the description to the Canadian Aviation Regulations. Part 9 deals with remotely piloted aircraft systems, which is a fancy name for your drone kit, including the controller and all. My tip on this, just read the regulations. Try not to spend too much time on stuff you don't understand, but take note of it. There will be some, I'm sure. Next, you'll go to another YouTube channel. Huh? But finish watching this first. Well, it's Don Joyce. He has an entire playlist on what you need to know. His plain English guide to the aviation regulations is all you need to understand and learn the rules. I've watched his videos a few times before taking the exam. Number two. R-Pass airframes, power plants, propulsion and systems. You need to know a lot about how drones work, what parts make them work and of course what can go wrong. Again, Don Joyce, your best friend. Get familiar with his videos and follow his study guides. It's your best free material you can get. Take notes or even screenshots. Number three. Human factors. This is all about situational awareness and the factors that can affect it. Some of the questions can take you by surprise. They will go as far as blind spots in your eyes and of course the influence certain substances can have on your ability to fly an aircraft. Again, Don Joyce's videos are great. 
but I also found the air disaster analysis videos by Mentor Pilot very useful for this area. You learn about human factors from an aviation specific perspective. It may not immediately seem relevant to drones, but it is definitely important stuff to pass this exam. Number four, meteorology. And you guessed it, Don Joyce and Mentor Pilot have you covered. Know the types of clouds and how to read them. The effect frost and precipitation can have on your drone and where to get weather information, including how to decode it. You will get questions about it. Number five, navigation. While your drone can navigate via GPS, you need to be able to understand such things as longitude and latitude, be able to identify your location and read navigational charts that are intended for manned aircraft pilots. This is another area where Don Joyce is your best friend. Number six, flight operations. This is a very comprehensive knowledge area. It includes things as air traffic patterns around aerodromes, the effect the thickness of the air will have on an aircraft, what it's called and how it's measured. Yep, you guessed it, Don Joyce. Can you see the pattern? Number seven, theory of flight. Similar to number six, but this one is more about what makes drones, helicopters, and fixed wing aircraft fly, and what can mess it up. It's pure physics, guys. You may shake your head about some of the details you're expected to know, because it definitely won't make you a better drone pilot. Finally, radio telephony. Am I saying this right? <laughs> What's your 20? Yes, you're expected to know how to communicate to air traffic controllers and other airmen via radio, just like airline pilots do. The rules are actually kind of conflicting on that, as you're only supposed to use a radio as a last resort in drone situations, and you're not actually required to even have a radio. However, if you do, you may not transmit unless you have a ROC license for that. There you have it, all the knowledge areas. Don Joyce is your ticket to getting it all lined up for free, but you have to be motivated to do it as it still requires you to spend the time and effort. Other valuable resources of information are the Aviation Information Manual, the Canada Flight Supplement, and the Water Aerodrome Supplement. But the only one I recommend you purchase is the Drone Pilot Canada app because you can access all the information required through that and you can access the TC AIM for free on the Transport Canada website. You do not have to pay someone hundreds of dollars for a course. You can take the exam at any time. Link in the description below. The only thing you lose if you fail is your 10 bucks. Do it. Another thing worth mentioning is that you're allowed to have all your reference material open during the test and you can even Google questions as required. The exam is by far the biggest hurdle in my experience. But you also have to be well prepared for the flight review. For that, I'll be heading outside and explain exactly what I did and how it all worked out. That'll be in the next video of this two-part series. The easiest way to make sure you don't miss it is to subscribe and make sure notification is turned on. Now, I'd really appreciate if you can gently touch the like button before you click off and go to Don Joyce's channel. Happy flying and exam taking.